That's good. Why isn't the whole album like that? Wait. It's in the B movie. Hold on, that's kind of fun. This? Oh. So this album by the Beatles, Abbey Road. I have never heard this whole album. The only songs I've heard are Come Together, Here Comes the Sun, obviously, right? I think I know that song. And that's it. Those are the only songs I've heard on this album that I'm aware of. But I bought this CD. I got it from eBay because somebody said, somebody on the radio who is a huge fan of the Beatles said that the songs on streaming right now, the Beatles music, or at least Abbey Road, has been remastered so many times and so much that the music doesn't even sound the same as the original. Like there's just diff small changes that the songs don't sound the same as the original recording. So this like mega fan of the Beatles was talking about this and he was frustrated with that. And then he said that the most closely sounding, I don't know how to say this, the album version that is the most close to the original recordings that he could find is the 1987 CD. He got this on eBay and then I went on eBay and I ordered the same thing, the 1987 remastered or edition of the CD, the album. I'm really hungry. That's a part of this. I'm, I'm about to order, literally um, order some kava and listen to this while I wait for the food to be ready. That's what I, that's why I'm doing this. But I ordered this because I am not a huge fan of the Beatles, but as a music lover or, you know, somebody who respects music as an art, I thought it would be good for me to get the actual best version of the songs if I ever want to listen to them. So I got the CD and I thought I would film my first time listening to it. So I'm going to pop this in while I order my kava. And it's a pretty long album though, 40 something minutes, so I don't know if I'll get through it, but I'm just gonna pop this in to my CD player and we'll see if it actually plays. Let's just go for it. Do oh, I have a CD in here, shoot. <laughs> First, I gotta take out my Halsey. Best Halsey album, in my opinion. Let's do this, Let's see if it plays. I know Come Together. So starting off, I already know this song. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel, I don't feel anything really with this song. I'm not a, I'm not a Beatles fan. I just don't, I understand the significance of them as a band and they like changed the music world but I don't feel anything. This this video is also very off brand because I I don't do any kind of review videos and the Beatles is not like my cup of tea. But I wanted to give it a try. So first song, I already know this song and I, uh, it's like, you know what I mean? I mean that, that part is cool of the song. I do like that. I like that, but yeah, okay. And this is good. This is good. I love a guitar like this sound. Love it. This is very good. Like bluesy. That's good. My kava order is in. Now I wait. I'm so hungry because I had yogurt for breakfast. Then I went to work and then I skipped lunch so that I could leave work early. But then because of that, I'm starving. Absolutely starving. Then I went to Barnes and Noble for no reason at all but I got this cool book, this David Lynch book, Catching the Big Fish, Meditation, Consciousness, and Creativity. So I kinda had to get that. And so I'm just really, really hungry. It's like five o'clock and all I've had is yogurt. So. Okay, this is called, this is something. I like it so far. Okay. I like this, I like this. Ooh. It's kind of like Pink Floyd 
which I love. So I do like this one. This is good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next. John was quizzical, studied metaphysical science in the home. Maxwell's Silver Hammer. This one's not for me either. It'd be fun in a movie, I think. Maybe I just like heavier music. I like folksy stuff. I like rock, rock. Um, I like some pop, I don't know. But like, this is like, I think I just, when I think of music, I think I just, there's like almost like your baseline energy or some kind of energy that you actually naturally have affects your music taste or something. Because I do, I love jazz, like cool jazz. So I've got that like cool vibe, but then also like a little bit darkness that like makes me like dark, darker music. But I'm not a like happy go lucky goofy person. That means nothing. But I just can't vibe to it. I'm just, maybe I'm just too hungry. <laughs> okay, next one is Oh Darling. Oh Darling. Now that's, that's my vibe. Mm, that's good. Yes. That's good. Why isn't the whole album like that? That's good. I liked that part. Okay. You like go rough. I like that. That's, that's it. Okay. That's my favorite so far. Sorry, I zoned out. Okay. Octopus's Garden. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. I'd ask my friends to come and see an octopus's garden with me under the sea in an octopus's garden. Wait, I just saw this on the book. It says bonus interviews with Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. I, I just noticed that. Huh. Okay, what's this? I want you. She's so heavy. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow, this one's bad. Yeah. See, why isn't the whole album like this stuff? This is, this is good. This is good. Uh huh. The Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. My camera's SD card ran out, so I'm gonna have to film the rest tomorrow. But I got my kava, and I'm gonna go eat that, and then we'll film the second half of the album tomorrow. Make this something to me. Cause it's all misunderstood. When I try to do a ride, it's not a ride.
I'm back. It's the next day and we are still on track. I want you. She's so heavy. This is track six. We still got a lot more to go. So let's see what I think. Whoa. Did it just end that abruptly? Was it supposed to end that abruptly? Okay. Here comes the sun. I already know this song. And it just makes me think of that movie Dougal or whatever. Do you know that movie? I gotta look that up. Cause am I right? This was in that movie, wasn't it? No, this is not in Dougal. Wait. It's in the B movie. Hold on, that's kind of fun. Does anyone remember this movie though? Dougal? Can you see that? I'll put it on the screen. That looks like a fever dream. That movie. Oh God, Dougal looks like a nightmare. No, magic was in it, in that movie. Okay, sugar, sugar. Okay, yeah. This song wasn't in Dougal, it was in the B movie. Right? Yeah. I'm watching the B movie scene. So that was a cover. Sorry, let's get back to the the main song. I don't love Here Comes the Sun, but it's a fun, it's a fun song. Okay, next one is because. Let's see. Because the world is round, it turns me on. I like this one. This is a good one. That was good. That was a good one. Okay, you never, you never give me your money. <laughs> you never give me your money. This is good so far. This is good. I like this. A turn. Hmm. That one was okay for me. It like went in and out. I really liked a lot of the parts in it. It's a pretty good one. So far, I think my favorites are Oh Darling, I Want You, and Because. Those are my favorites so far. Okay, this is uh, Sun King. Like this. This is like a perfect song for summertime, but a little bit drowsy. Is that the right word? Is this the same song? It must be. Yeah. Oh no! Now it's Mean Mr. Mustard. It's that was a quick transition. I think, I think it is. Oh, oh my gosh, now it's the next one. Polythene Pam. So these three songs are like bam, bam, bam. There's like not even a pause between. Oh my gosh. I was just listening to this song and I didn't realize that it changed again. It now we're on the next song. She came in through the bathroom window. I didn't even know that that was a separate song. Okay, now I think we're going to the next one. Those like transitions between those four songs are very fast. That one was pretty good, the last one. Golden Slumbers. This sounds nice. 
same Get back home. Oh. oh I like this I like this this is the oh, yeah No pause at all. Carry that weight. This? Ooh. That. That might have been the best moment on the whole album. This is a good one, too. This is a good one. We're, this is like at the end of the album. There's only two more songs after this. Okay, next song. The end. But it's not the last song. It's just called The End. Whoa. The beginning of... The beginning of the album had, I think, a slower pause in between the songs, the tracks. But then when it got to the middle, it sped up, and now it's just going, going, going. Okay, it's still the end song. Okay, I think this is gonna be the last song here. Her Majesty, the coronation was this morning for the king now of England, but we still love Her Majesty the Queen. Rest in peace. Now, the final song of Abbey Road. Her Majesty. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl. She doesn't have a lot to say. She changes from day to day. I want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. I know, yeah. Someday I'm gonna make a mine. Cute. Oh, that was it. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, wait. Let's see. Why am I gonna stop the camera? All right. We're gonna do final reviews. I'm gonna take this out. All right, final reviews. What are my thoughts on Abbey Road? Um, yeah, okay, so first, my initial thoughts, like when I started the album, okay. So, I didn't like, or I, I wasn't super into a lot of the songs in the first half, I would say. But I think my favorites, if I'm just going on the first half of the album first, I think, I do like something, but I didn't love it. I really liked Oh Darling, and I really liked I Want You, She's So Heavy. And then I really liked Because. So those three are my favorites from the first half of the album, for sure. I wish that there was more that sounded like I Want You. That song had such amazing parts. So that song was really, really great. I think that's one of my top favorites. Um, you Never Give Me Your Money was pretty good too, but I didn't love every part of that song. Then, when it went into Sun King, Mean Mr. M Mustard, Polythene, Pam, and she came in through the bathroom window, like, those four songs were, like, going, going, and I, was, I wasn't even able to keep up, to be honest, and then it kept kind of going like that for the rest of the album, where the songs were blending together a lot better, and I think that might be one of the things that the person who mentioned that this version of the album is the one to listen to or like this version and, and earlier is because those songs are so they're designed to blend in with each other and when you listen on streaming and stuff or the more remastered albums there's too much of a pause between the songs like if you're listening to the song from beginning to end on Spotify or something I've never done that but I've heard that that's when there is such a pause between the songs that it's not how it was meant to be. So that was really cool to experience that with this because I've heard albums where the songs are meant to blend together and they do, but I listen to those albums on Spotify. So even newer albums within the last couple of decades, when an artist designs it to blend together, there's still usually a slight pause that my brain can pick up on 
So that was really cool to see how very seamlessly, it's not that the songs sounded similar, that they blended, that there wasn't really a transition, but the pause was like so non-existent that my brain just thought it was the song changing because there are a lot of songs on this album that within one song, there are different um, moments with different tunes and all of that. So that was really cool. Um, so I didn't like very much though. I didn't love Sun King, Mean Mr. Mr. Polly, Thean Pam. She came through the bathroom window. I think I liked some parts of that. Golden Slumbers I really liked. And Carry That Weight had some good parts too. And then the end in Her Majesty like went bam, like real fast. So, okay. So those are my thoughts about like which songs I liked. Mm. But I think overall, I still don't love the Beatles. I kind of, I don't know now why this album is so famous because not really any of the songs besides Here Comes the Sun and Come Together are very famous songs, you know, that you hear to this day. Those are the only songs that I think, the only two songs. I'm sure there's like a history of why this album is so, so famous and well known, but there's kind of a reason why I've never heard the whole album. And because there are a lot of albums from back in the day that I have definitely heard and, you know, Pink Floyd and Fleetwood Mac. Like there's albums that are huge hits that people to this day will listen to the full album all the way through. But it's interesting because I wonder something about this. This isn't an album that unless you're a Beatles fan, I don't hear many people listening to this album all the way through. And I, to be completely honest, because this is an honest review, honest opinions, I, I can't even say review because it's not like this is a new album that just came out. I think an album like this that's so famous can't be reviewed. There's no reason to. It's a very famous album in music history. So review isn't the right word. But if I'm being honest, I don't think I'll listen to the album all the way through again. It didn't really change my feelings about the Beatles. I wanted to give it a chance to see if it would, to see if I could be into the Beatles. But I still, it's just not really for me probably, but I do like a lot of the songs that, not a lot, but I like some of the songs that I might go back and listen to I Want You again, because I think that was the one that was most memorable for me. So I might go back and listen to those specific songs that I liked. But I think overall, the album didn't really speak to me that much and didn't leave a lasting impression as a whole. So that's what I think. But I can see why like the Beatles were unique. But at the same time, because when did this album come out compared to... Because I heard a lot on this album that sounded like, to me, sounded like Pink Floyd, sounded like Queen, and things like that. So I'm wondering if that was just the music of the moment or, you know, hold on, let me see. Ah, Pink Floyd came after this album. Like the Pink Floyd albums, Dark Side of the Moon and... I wish you were here and their fam famous albums were in the 70s. This is 69. So I'm wondering if this at all inspired, if some of the sounds from the Beatles inspired Pink Floyd at all. I don't know. Let me know if you know. You can tell me the lore and all of that. And then Queen, I'm completely sure that came after this. Queen was in the 70s, correct? Yeah, 70s. So I wonder if this kind of stuff really did set, you know, a precedent for music sound in the 70s, because this is 69, and you hear a lot of this kind of sound in 70s music. Anyway, so that's really cool then. If you know all the history of the Beatles, you can let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll read it, and it'll be interesting. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I'm still not a Beatles fan, but I respect it. I respect it. And there were some good moments. So anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. I know this video was really random, but I kind of just wanted to give this album a chance and I thought I would film it. Okay, that's it. I'll talk to you later. Have a good rest of your day or whatever. Goodbye. Oh, and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and let me know. Nah, well, I don't think I'll do any more 
album reviews, but maybe. Let me know if that might be interesting. Okay, goodbye. After having to edit this video three, maybe four times if it makes me do it again, to cut down for the copyrights, I have to say that the album has definitely grown on me after listening to it over and over again, editing. And um, yeah, they're good songs and I get it. I get the significance. Changed music history forever. Goodbye. Good night.